What's up guys, Axis here with day 7, the final day of modeling week and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this steampunk-esque render in Cinema 4D. This is one of my favourite intros uh, or, or pieces I guess, it's just a, just a render. Uh, it's just a still image that I created. I'm using Octane, uh, Nix FX from Google, uh, mainly Octane and uh, Cinema 4D though. As you can see, I've got it as my background. It looks nice and crisp. Uh, I did render a 4K and then obviously downscale to the Retina display uh, and my, my computer's 1080p currently display. Uh, so yeah, uh, basically it's um, using a different, uh, just random like simple techniques, cutting the logo up with knives uh, in Cinema 4D and yeah, that's basically it. So I'm going to be showing you how to create that now. Uh, I just need to get a logo, so something... I'm just going to get something from here. Dot .ai This has to be a dot .ai path. So... Uh, yeah, I can just go through a bunch of these. Phase. I'm going to be cliche and use phase, how about that? Everybody loves the phase logo. Right, there we go. I've zeroed it out so it's now centered. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be showing you the, the basics or the basis to the, uh, the kind of style. What you do is you put this in the extrude. And I'm going to put this to like maybe, since this logo scales a bit weird, I'm going to have to put it to like 500 to make it actually look decent. Maybe even higher, 700. Eh, that'll look good. And then what we do is we do, you're going to have to pay attention for this because it's kind of annoying. Uh, you press C to make it editable, right click, go to select children, uh, click C once again and then go to connect objects and delete. And then we'll have a one uh, extrudes object that is now editable. This is going to allow us to make cuts in the object. And then we, if we click on the polygon mode, we can go and uh, cut random bits out of this. So, um, first off, I'm just going to be showing you how to create the um, little pipes along it. So, uh, I'll just do a, a simple cut here. If we get the line tool, we can drag along here. Oh, so, I, I, sorry. I'm just using shortcuts. I'm way too used to this. Um, to using shortcuts. Uh, what you do is you click M and then K, or you can right click and go and click on knife. And basically, we're going to be using the line uh, mode for this one cut here. And what you do is you just drag along here. And then it will, the, the polygons, or the points in the object will show and it will allow you to cut through the object. So now we've got this whole top piece segmented off and we can click E for the move tool. And right click, go to extrude inner, extrude, go to the extrude tool. And then we're going to extrude this in slightly, right click, extrude slightly again. And then extrude in again. Just mess about, there's no kind of set way of doing this. Um, and then I'm going to right click, maybe bring it up slightly, just to switch up again. I'm going to go in uh, with the extrude here. And that is a really simple cut there. So now what we can do is we can uh, kind of fill this up with objects. So for the first one, I'm just going to do the simplest uh, the simplest thing I did, which was get a cylinder, and we're going to put this on the x-axis, bring this up to the middle. And I'm also going to put the display on garage shading, garage, go garage shading. Uh, and then we're going to zoom in here. Um, as you can see, there's tons of segments on this, it's going to slow up our render time, uh, which I'm going to put down to like 20, because we're not going to need a lot of segments for something. Uh, that, you know, is just uh, got such a small radius. And then we can turn up the height as much as we want because we're going to cut this with a bool object uh, just just to be quick. I mean, you could do this properly with actually um, putting a knife cut through every single object, but I'm not going to bother with that. And then I'm going to move this back on the... What is it? I can't see. It'd be better if you went into the top view and did this, but... I'll do that in a minute. So as you can see, it's, we want it inside the object slightly, like here. And then we're going to put this inside a cloner. Go into the object, grid array, one, 
one, no. This is, the Y is the one we want to increase the height on. So increase it to like, just basically where it fills up the object, but where it's not a completely, you know, just solid object. I'm going to go into the original display mode so I can see this. And then I'm going to go to like maybe two, make that look nice. And then again, bump up this until we get a solid filling of cylinders. And I'm going to click on render instances, uh, which will speed up the render time, which will just put pointers to the object instead of actually uh, rendering each one and looking at the object. Uh, and as you can see, this is not what we want, it's sticking at the edge. So a simple, quick way of uh, doing this uh, or fixing this problem would be going into the front mode, zooming in and then getting your linear spline from up here. Drawing this out. And then closing the spline, just drawing around the part that you want to get rid of. And now we've done that, we'll do it to the other side also. Oh, let's create a new object, click off it, and then do the same thing on this side. And there we have both objects. Now, uh, I'm going to make these both one object by selecting them and right clicking and going to connect objects, delete, and extrude. And now we, uh, you can see we have this bootleg uh, way of covering these up, but we're going to need to turn up the depth. And then we're also going to need to put the uh, cloner. And the bad thing about this is you're going to have to turn this off uh, render instances for this to actually work. You're going to put this inside a bool, a boolean object, and then uh, we're just going to fold these two objects and then put the uh, extrude as a cloner of the bool and underneath the cloner. And I will wait for it. Yep, there we go. And now we have a perfectly clean object. Well, it's not perfectly clean because through here you'll be able to see that it's not clean. But for what I'm doing, it's perfectly clean. Anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to just decrease the segments to like ten or something, so I'm able to actually work around the scene because I was getting a bit of lag there. Anyway, now. We're going to do one of the other cuts that I did. Basically what you do, it's the same thing that we did before. Extrude inner. And I'm going to use D as a shortcut for uh, for uh, extruding inner. For extruding normally, I mean, sorry. I don't know the extrude inner one. I'll probably learn that soon enough. Also, what you'd want to do is you'd want to bevel these objects. I'll show you to do that in a second. But I'm not going to do all of them because it would take too long for me to go through and bevel them. Also, you want to bevel the outside of the object. You can just use the same technique that I'm going to use here. Uh, I'm just going to move this back, actually. What you're going to want to do is you go... I'm going to just do one of the edges here because uh, it's what we're working on right now. So if I get the edge mode, double click here, it will select all these edges. If it's not working for you, go to loop selection and you can select the entirety of that loop. You can also do it for things like the the kind of out uh, band of the entire thing, but be careful because it can select some of the inner objects as well. So I'm just going to select one object here. We go to extrude, uh, and then we go to bevel. Sorry, right click and bevel. And from here, uh, probably a bad part to choose, but uh, what we can do is we can go subdivision and we could go zero, which kind of looks cool on some objects, but uh, on a lot of other ones it will look weird, so you can turn it up to like five or whatever. Remember, more subdivisions uh, will slow up your, you know, your viewport and your render. So, uh, well, once you've done that, if you're using zero subdivisions, you can sometimes get some fong angle problems, and one easy way to fix this, um, well, I think it's the only way to fix this, is go to the fong angle and change the fong angle to either 0 to 30, I prefer 30, and as you can see, the uh, the kind of smoothing has now been fixed. Uh, that's just kind of a handy tip. I think I did it in the pillar tutorial as well, which you can check out. Um, I think it was like day 5 or something like that, or day 4. I'll probably have an annotation. Anyway, now that we've got that, we're going to do the little nubbins. I'll show you what they look like, these ones here. 
uh, and how we do this is we just get a cylinder again put this into Z and I'm going to click C to make this editable in fact maybe I'll turn down the subdivisions just so it's quicker to work with um, C and then we're going to click 9 for the live selection select all these points or you can use loop selection I'm just using uh, the selection it's got a shortcut I love so shortcuts uh, and then just so we can see what it's going to look like we can put this inside a subdivision surface which is what we're going to put it in anyway so if we can see how it looks when we're working on it we're going to hold command drag up on the Z and as you can see it's we've got a nice smooth edge now and we're going to hold control again or command and then drag this in slightly just mess about with this until you get something that looks pretty cool oh uh, I think that's going to be fine and then if we click off this you can see we've got a little bit of problem here and one way to fix this uh, well, one of the way that I used to fix it is uh, you hold uh, command and then you drag in slightly and it will create it will kind of create like a little uh, bump there and then when you click off it you won't have any of those uh, smoothing problems um, so yeah that's basically it and then what we're going to do is we're going to put this inside a cloner uh, grid array going to scale down this also I put down the uh, the Z because I just want the count on the the X and Y I'm going to turn up the Y a bit as well render instances just for slight improved performance on this one uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to move this on the coordinates to 90 degrees on the X so now we can go into the front view and line this up slightly first part of lining up and then we can go into the top view and move this into the middle you can obviously get a specific coordinate but just save it and save some time I'm not going to something like that maybe I should have gotten an exact coordinate right there we go I don't uh, they're a bit too big I think I'd probably scale them down a bit something like that and then finally the last uh, the last thing I think I'm going to show you for this is the little circle now there's lots of tools that allow you to um, cut circles inside these objects but the way I'm going to do it is just um, the kind of noob way I guess basically all you need to do is you need to put this inside a boolean the uh, main logo and then we're going to get a, a cylinder put this on the Z orientation drag this up slightly and drag the radius up as well and then we're going to put this as a child of the bull but underneath the extrude and as you can see that's what we've got here and we're going to do what we did originally at the start for the extrude we're going to click C right click go to select children right click uh, no C and then right click and then go to connect objects and delete and we've got a bunch of these objects around here you can get rid of them by going to the edge mode and then we can just go to live selection by clicking 9 and selecting all of these there we go if you delete one and it kind of affects the object uh, just undo it and then do undo some of the other ones but that just kind of cleans up what you're working with I'm going to go back to polygon mode just to be sure I'm going to get loop selection and then we are going to do some extruding so I'm going to just hold co uh, command uh, while I drag up on the Z I'm going to drag this in and I'm going to drag in again again while holding command every time I do this and one time again and I'm again going to just select all these points this is what I would do for every selection I'm making just double click and then go to bevel I'm going to go for like 8 I'm going to undo because it actually kind of sets a, a the standard offset here something like that will look fine so yeah that's basically how you do it you just repeat this on different uh, faces of this object um, but that is that is really just what I did for this object and then I did some lighting in octane which is a paid uh, what do you call it external kind of renderer 3d um, renderer for um, cinema 4d
it's also a standalone as well so thank you guys for 10k like us i never thought i'd be able to say that i had 10k it's just an, um, it's just an, like so many people so yeah thanks so much for 10k and this is just this is just one of the ways i'm going to say thank you to you guys for this planning on doing some other stuff as well so if you guys enjoyed this remember to subscribe check out some other tutorials as well and leave a comment asking you know um you know if you have any problems maybe you guys can help them uh, other people out i'll try and help you out the best i can and if you have any other tutorial ideas i would be happy to do them just leave a suggestion below so yeah thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial